Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. I'm Joseph Brewer and we're continuing our discussions on my book, A Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Tonight's is Zoom session number 10 and we're going to continue on. This will be our third uh, discussion on security. So let's jump on in because this one is a little bit long and it was uh it was interesting so dealing with a stalker not something i had done before not something that i was familiar with i reached out to i think three different uh church security organizations for some guidance and the only guidance i got was have the person call the police. Um, obviously, they need to call the police. I get that. But they need more than, eh, call the police. You know, um, they need something from us as uh, the security team, as men of the church, as church members. They need more than just, eh, call the police. Um, so, that wasn't any help. Um, so I started watching YouTube videos on uh, how stalkers um, conduct themselves, things they do. I considered human nature and um, I formulated a plan. So first of all, um, It may not be easy for that person to talk to you about this whole issue of being stalked. Um, I, I mean, it's personal. I mean, you know, they're afraid. Uh, their whole world is being violated at the moment. Um, they, they don't feel safe. Um, their privacy, their space, you know, so you... Whoever, if you're the person that they come to talk to about it, you need to make them as comfortable as possible. And you need to be kind, reassuring. Um, you need to be loving. And you need to listen to what they have to tell you and take it very seriously. Um, it's no joke. So that's the first thing out the gate. And pray for wisdom. Um, cause you're going to need wisdom to help the person. And like I said, they're already being violated. So once you inform your team of the situation, they only need a certain amount of information. Um, they don't need to know everything. They only need to know the facts pertinent issues um you know the, the person's name what they look like a picture what they drive you know um and who the person is that's being stalked um they don't need any of the personal details on that and uh <clears throat> you know during my usher's meeting where i was going over that the person was being stalked somebody asked me one of those personal questions and it's like you know what it's none of our business um now it, it, i know because i was the one that dealt with the situation but um that's not our business now if, if the person wants to tell you about it on their own come to you and tell you about it fine that that that's up to them but as i see it they've all they're already dealing with a lot um over this whole situation so um let's not make it worse for them they're, you know their privacy has been violated let's not cause that at church we want them to be comfortable at church we want them to um you know that to feel safe for them not like oh hey psh, 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 you know people are talking about it so i instructed the ushers not to discuss it um not to talk about it and if they needed to talk about it in relationship to it, fine. And I also told them not to talk, go talk to her about it. Um, if I, and now when we were done, I told her, I had gotten her permission to relate, relay the information to my ushers, which are my security team. And 
I got her permission. And uh, so once I had finished telling them, I informed her that I told them. And I told her, they're not supposed to come talk to you about this. But if you want to talk to them, if there's something going on, if there's a moment where you feel like you need it, you know, feel free to talk to them about it. And if you're concerned, go sit by one of them if you want to. Um, and I told them that too. I said, look, if, if it comes up that she feels threatened and she wants to come and sit by you, let her sit by you. That's, that's not a problem. We're going to do what we can to watch out for her and protect her. So um, it, you know, it's just, again, be kind, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, I guess, you know, that, that that's one of the things that, you know, I, I, over the years, I've softened, and I have found that kindness is very important. Um, now, you know, this stalker situation isn't just going to go away immediately. Um, now, we're, uh, February will be two years since this came up. I remind my ushers in my ushers meeting um, probably once a month to keep an eye out for that stalker because, you know, I think it was 16 months later, she'd had no contact and all of a sudden the stalker popped back up again. So um, don't let down on this. Don't forget it. I mean, I don't five years from now, unless the guy's in the ground or moved to another state and I find out about it, I'm still going to be reminding my ushers to watch out for the stalker because we don't know when he's going to pop back up again, because that's what they do. You know, they may go away for a little bit, and, but they're going to come back and try again because they don't understand why they were rejected. Um, and they think they're entitled to, uh, that person for some reason. So um, don't don't just mention it once and done. Um, you know, keep it fresh on your usher's mind, on your security team's mind. Now, um, we needed a picture, um, and we needed his name. We needed to know what he drove. So. I got all that information, and so I sent a text message to all of my ushers with his photographs, so they knew what he looked like. They knew his full name in case he decided to come up and use his full name instead of his um, AKA, um, because he had a nickname that he went by, um, so I gave him his nickname, his photographs, what he drove, and uh, so you know, probably every three to six months, I send those to my ushers again, to make sure that it's up on the top of their uh, messages. So um, anyway, just don't forget about it. Don't don't pretend like it just went away because you haven't heard anything about it. 16 months before she heard anything again, after she had notified the police. I mean, that's quite a while. And then the guy started showing up again and started stalking her online and things like that. So um, anyway, don't, don't be complacent about it. Don't forget about it. Um, keep it, you know, on your mind and watchful for that. So anyway, I came up with a list of questions, um, 11, well, 11 questions that I asked her. Um, because I needed some information. I needed, there were things I needed to know. Like I said, the rest of the team didn't need to know all of this stuff, but I needed to know so I could, you know, in, in formulating a plan, and I'm, I'm sure I asked more questions than were necessary, but this is also the first time that we've ever dealt with anything like this, and there were no resources to help me. So my first question is, what was her relationship with him? Because, um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not around her all the time. I'm not, you know, when she leaves church, I, I don't know, you know, who she interacts with and interacts with or the things that she does. So I needed to know the relationship, you know, is he somebody that, 
she was you know casually seeing or did they just did they work together um you know is he an ex uh husband or something and now and I knew he wasn't an ex-husband but um you know is he some kind of an ex is uh you know is he just a creep that popped up out of nowhere um you know I I wanted to know what what are we really talking about here as far as the person himself so I could consider um how we should deal with that because um you know suppose it was an ex-husband and she had children um because this wasn't just about her and just this immediate situation this was also for the future in thinking about this but what if she it was an ex-husband and she had children with you know does he have any kind of rights that i need to be you know find out about so that was you know part of asking what the relationship was had to do with that too um you know again finding out where she knew him from you know where do you know him from i mean is he just you know is he a neighbor is he a co-worker um is he somebody that you you know at a business you frequent you know so I, it, again it was kind of going towards uh the character of the guy i wanted to know uh where she knew him from um i also wanted to know where he was currently stalking her at was it just if it was a co-worker was he just bothering her at work or was it after work um you know, and it, it turned out that it was at work, at home, online, um, and various things. So um, it was, yeah, I mean, that that that's serious. Um, so then uh, had she confronted him about it? Had others confronted him about it? Did, was he aware that he was making her uncomfortable, that he was violating her space and she was not interested in him? um i you know I, I think that's an important piece of information to have that yeah he was told you know I, i'm not interested stay away um you know so it's it means it's not an accident that he's following her it's not an accident that he's showing up these places he's been told stay away so his intent is not to listen to anybody his intent is to do whatever he wants to do that's a bad dude right there so you know watch out for somebody like that then i wanted to know had he been to church because i don't see everybody that comes to church uh some people enter from other places that i'm unable to see so um had he been to church well because if he'd been there does he um does he know our facilities? Does he, you know, does he know where our entrances are, our exits are? Um, where did they sit in the auditorium if he was there? You know, did they sit in the same spot each time? And is it the same place that she normally sits? Um, I thought that was, you know, important information also, because um, what, wherever that was, let's move her someplace else. You know, someplace where he is unfamiliar with where she was going to be because you know i don't even though we're watching for him and we have his picture and all those things you know it if he gets by it won't take long for him to get into the building so it, let's move her to a different place if he's familiar with where she sits that way if he goes there she's not there um so i uh, you know knowing our facilities and all those things I, I thought that was you know important to know does he know these things does he know where you sit um so we moved her we we had you know i asked her to sit someplace else um but wherever she felt the most secure the most comfortable because that's what i want i wanted her to feel secure i wanted her to feel comfortable i wanted to be able to come to church listen to the preaching sing um you know and be blessed and be a blessing to others so that that was you know that was my goal um like i said we found out what he drives um so that if that vehicle come passes by that type of vehicle you know we're all looking for that we're paying attention to that if it parks out there we're looking at that um where does he live now i thought that was kind of important because if he lived in town well okay i mean you know 
he has a reason to maybe be driving by. But if he doesn't live in our town where our church is, uh, there's no legitimate reason for him to be driving past our church. So um, because we're in a residential uh, neighborhood where we're at. So, um, you know, it, it would have been intentional for him to have driven by. So knowing where he lived, I felt that was important to determine that. Because if he's just somebody that lives, you know, in, in the area, you know, in our city, and he's just driving across town, okay, maybe an accident that he drives by, it could happen. Um, also, I asked if she knew if he had any military or Leo background, law enforcement officer background, because to the best of my ability, I wanted to establish um, any levels of training that he might have. Uh, what might we be dealing with? Um, you know, does has he had any organized training that you know of? Um, you know, and so, and yeah, I went and looked at his social media profiles. I, I needed to learn what I could about the person, you know, because I, I'm just doing all the due diligence I can to help this woman to feel secure at church and to be safe. So it turns out he didn't have any military or law enforcement background. And that's nothing negative towards military or law enforcement. It just, I just wanted to know, does he have any kind of training in those areas? Um, so he didn't. Um, I asked her the things that he had done. Um, you know, it, it, is it just casually running into you? Um, is it showing up at your home? Well, he, you know, like I said, he actually showed up at her home and, um, you know, some did some things that were, you know, sketchy. Um, so uh, I thought that, again, goes to uh, his state of mind, uh, how he thinks, how he's going to operate, things he's going to do. You know, does he have any boundaries that he won't cross? Um, just things that I I felt were important to ask and to ascertain. Um, and then, like I said, got his name, photographs, and, you know, we, we pulled them off of his social media account. And I needed something for my ushers, you know, so that we could see, hey, this is uh, what the guy looks like. So keep an eye out for him. Um, and then I asked her, have you notified the police? And she had. So, um, but I also asked her if she notified the police at her place of employment, as well as where she lives. Um, because, you know, they're two different cities, and that means that's two different law enforcement uh, districts. So um, she had notified, um, I believe, at home, but I don't think she had notified at work. So I think she did at that point. So uh, anyway, I'm, I, maybe I asked too many questions, but I thought they were all pertinent and I thought they were all had uh, sound reasoning to them. But just like I said, don't forget about this situation. Don't get complacent about it. Don't just relax and think it's over because you haven't heard anything for a few months. No, 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 no. Uh, uh Like I said, five years from now, I'm still going to be watching out for this guy. Like I said, unless he's in the ground or moved to another state, still going to be watching out for this guy because um, like 16 months, you know, he went away for 16 months and then decided to pop back up again. So um, anyway, stalker is a si serious situation. So do what you can to make the person feel comfortable. Don't violate their um, privacy any more than it already has been. Um, you know, just watch out for them, take care of them. Um, again, kindness and um, do the best you can with that one. Um, it's not an easy one. <clears throat> I'll run down some of the incidents now that we've had at our church and uh, how we responded to it. So, uh, the one that really uh, bothered me a lot and uh, still does is we had a mother pushing a stroller up the sidewalk um, with her child. 
and there was a homeless guy that she walked by she did not notice that he was very intently watching her and um so he started staring at her when she was about 25 feet away from him uh then he stared as she went past him and she was you know she because he was standing in the way as she was pushing her stroller she was just going for a walk around the block um but uh, I think she was reading her Bible or something as she was walking, you know, pushing the stroller. She looked up, she smiled, and then she kept going. Well, uh, he watched her walk past for probably another 25 to 50 feet. And then he very quickly, uh, he had taken some stuff out of his backpack. He very quickly started shoving things back in his backpack and trying to get his backpack closed up. Uh, he had pulled out a scarf and put it around his neck. Um, this was a warm Sunday morning. Um, and scarf didn't make any sense to me. And uh, anyway, so he, uh, after he finally got his backpack together, he went out into the middle of the street and he looked to see where she went. And I guess he saw her around the corner he took off quickly behind her. All right. Now, I hadn't had um, two or three guys out there. You know, it it wouldn't have been, the, the situation could have been worse. One guy followed him. I went immediately through the back of our property, and I went out through um, an alleyway up somebody's yard and I got out on the street behind our church and got to her as quickly as I could. He was shocked. It shocked him that somebody, there was a man with her and that it was me because I think he'd seen me. I got there and as I got to her, he came rounding the corner because she'd already rounded the next corner. And he was, like I said, he was shocked that I was there. Um, and it caused him to, you know, stutter and stop. Now, I don't know what his intent was, but it wasn't good. You don't chase down a woman pushing a stroller like that unless you have bad intent. Um, so then I stared him down for a second, made sure he knew I was there because of him. I saw him and he's not going to mess around with her. So he stopped. He went back to the corner, but he wasn't done yet. He started swinging around the stop sign on the corner while he was watching us. Well, okay. Um, I'm with her now. He's not going to bother her. I'm not going to let anything happen to her. So I walked her all the way back to our church. Well, when we get back to the church, we see him come walking back and continuing on the path that he was already headed on. So what does that tell me? That tells me he broke pattern as to where he was going to mess with her. There, I don't know what his intent was, but it was bad, and we weren't going to let it happen. So I had one guy follow. When, him, when he took off, one guy followed. Now, again, if part of it's a distraction, if he's somebody else with him, if I, if all of us left, then the church itself is vulnerable. And this happened during our prayer meeting. So um, she happened to get there after prayer meeting had started and her daughter was uh, a little fussy. She was calming her down to before she brought her into the nursery or into prayer. So the one guy followed him. I cut him off the other way, and I had one guy remain in front just in case um, there was another party there, and that was a distraction. I i don't know. I'm just trying to cover all the bases I can on that. So, uh, again, multiple people, but that's how we handled that, and praise God, everything, everybody was safe. Now, that was, uh, that one was pretty scary to me because he had bad intent. Had we not had a couple of guys out there, had we not been paying attention, God, only God knows 
what may have happened to that woman and her child. Um, so, you know, having that security presence outside, paying attention, and we were, we were paying attention, we were watching, you know, it, it was, uh, um, again, he didn't fit. He was somebody new walking through, but we knew that because we pay attention to who's out there and we're friendly to who's out there. Somebody had even said hi to him. One of the security guys, one of the ushers said hi to him. The guy wouldn't turn around and look at him. He just said hi to him, um, you know, in the air kind of thing. So, um, but if we hadn't had that security presence out there, I, I hate to think of what may have happened. So anyway, I'm, I'm grateful to God nothing happened. Um, I praise God for his watch care over us and that he used us to protect that, uh, that mother and her child. So anyway, we're going to stop there for the session and uh, let's pray. Father, once again, I'm, I'm just grateful that you uh, gave us the eyes to be able to see that threat, that you gave us the ability um, to watch over that mother and her child and to uh, protect them and keep them safe. I pray that you would just continue to use us, all of us, in those ways in our churches and to protect our churches and keep us safe. And again, I just ask that you give us wisdom. Watch over us, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and have a good night.